The purpose of this video is to show you how to use OAuth 2, meaning Facebook Connect, um, with both Facebook Connect and LDS Connect as examples. It's a zero config, git clone and run setup. I'll show you. We're going to go to ldsconnect.org, click on API. It's kind of a choose your own adventure. Currently, there's only a node backend, but I'd like to get Ruby and Python in there soon. And then uh, front ends, we have jQuery and Angular. So I'm going to go with the jQuery example on this. And it's basically just git clone, uh, do the npm install, bower install, and run. And uh, with the jQuery example, we don't even need the bower install. So I'm just going to copy this, get that clone started. As soon as that's down, I'm going to push D into our Passport LDS Connect example and do npm install. While that's running, you can see the next part of the instructions direct you to get this front end. And let's see, do I have the instructions copied over here as well? No, I don't. OK, so we'll go off of these instructions. They're the same instructions. It's just for convenience. I was copying it in both places. So we're going to clone our jQuery front end into the public folder now that that installation is done. And I'm just going to take a peek in there, but yeah, there's no bower, so that one's fairly simple. And then all we got to do is just run the server. Now, this has HTTPS certificates, real ones, in there. They're just for a domain that points to localhost. And so that domain, I'll just uh, command click on the link here to get it to open. And we can just try with Facebook first. I'd actually already authenticated, so it didn't present me with that dialogue that asks, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Um, and then this is just the user profile information. I can click log out, log back in, use LDS Connect. Same thing, I'd already authenticated, otherwise it would have popped up with that. You know, do you want to give permissions to this and that? Um, so, you know, now you know. Boom, working example, right? Let's take a peek a little closer at it. Let me show you here in the server area. Um, that's where the SSL certs are. And look under lib. Well, first, let's go under app. So basically, simple express app with Passport. And all of this is just normal setup, except we're requiring a Facebook strategy and an LDS strategy. Um, the base URL is created dynamically. That's in serve.js, but you know it becomes local.ldsconnect.org on port 8043. Basic. Oh, excuse me. In memory, uh, memdb. So nothing fancy, but this is where you do your session storage and whatnot. That's just part of Passport. And then some more. Uh, normal express and uh, initialization and passport initialization and then we get down here into the fun part um, where we can get the session with slash account .json. we can log out with um, slash dot log out and I'll show you the Facebook strategy but it's it's a really simple basic passport setup and then I've got these dummy ID and secrets that are actually for a real Facebook app so you don't have to change anything as you saw to get the example working same thing with LDS connect you don't need to make any changes um, until you actually you know are registering your own app but you can you know play around with this dummy app on your local host so you show you um, what this looks like. So just arbitrary name FB strategy one creates the strategy, handles the access token. There should be some database logic or whatever here, but currently there isn't. Um, I mean, you know, it's just a simple example. And then um, part of the magic for how it works so seamlessly on the browser side, where it doesn't take away from your your user flow 
is that I've standardized slash auth slash Facebook, Facebook and slash auth Facebook callback. So all the strategies that I'd be building out would follow this pattern. And I'll show you the, the file that's being served up is this OAuth close.html. And that has some JavaScript in it that assumes this um, callback style. So it just parses the name of the provider out and then whether the, um, the authentication was successful, whether it provided a code or an error, and then handles the session that way instead of doing a redirect. So same number of HTTP requests, you know, one, you're sending the browser a redirect and then the browser's coming back and requesting again. The other, we're sending back the browser a little JavaScript snippet and encased in this uh, HTML and then we make a request to get the session data. So this is a little bit smarter than um, the average example. And then LDS Connect is pretty much the same thing. There are some additional configuration options here. Um, you don't really need to worry about them. All that's taken care of for you. The only thing that you really needed to worry about was the um, ID and secret. But down at the bottom, there's one thing I'll mention. There's this LDS Connect proxy so that you can make um, the API will be the same against your own web server as it would be against LDS Connect once LDS Connect supports um, client only OAuth and, uh, and cross origin resource sharing, which that's in the pipeline. It's just not, not there yet. Um, so that's just kind of a bit to ease the transition. So now let's take a look inside of our public folder. First, I'm going to show you the. So th this is just a little bit of fancy JavaScript that um, will contact the opening tab. So when we clicked on that, you know, login with uh, Facebook, it opens up a new tab, does the OAuth in that other tab, then closes and redirects back. And we could actually do that in an iframe. There's just some security concerns that I haven't. Um, quite uh, gotten to the point I, I, I want to to do that yet, but I would like to get there to where it's even more seamless, not even a new tab, just in an iframe. Um, just have to work out those security concerns, like I said. But here, I don't mind that there's these set timeouts and whatnot. It's just to get around some iOS web view bugs, and um, there might be a couple browsers here and there that have, you know, especially mobile platforms where you just kind of got to do this hack to um, tell the window to close. And they're in set timeouts because they need to happen in a particular order, but they need to happen after one of the um, event loop cycles. Anyway, so it's going to call complete login. And we'll see where we've defined that in the jQuery side in just a second with the name of the provider and the ref, which will either have a code or it won't. So, that's that. And then the local storage is just a fallback mechanism. Um, so yeah, none of that you, you really need to mess with. And let's just take a look. All right, so I've got a test login function. We'll talk about that in just a second. I'm attaching um, an event handler onto the click. I'm using Bootstrap and um, jQuery Bootstrap, the you know the, the associated plugins. So when that login gets clicked, that's where we do the complete login. And I actually should have done in here testing for uh, code equals on that ref. Let me just go ahead and do that now. Or I guess I could say if not. Then we want to do window.alert looks like the login failed. And then um, otherwise we test login. Oh, I need to return on that. Otherwise we test login. And test login is just getting the account to see if they're, and that returns the session. So just see if there's a session, and then um, if there isn't, then nothing changes, and if there is, we just swap out some of the buttons um, and fill out the profile information in the image, that kind of thing. So really simple-like, and let's see down here at the bottom what we got. Oh, I forgot to 
show you this part. So um, when the user clicks the button, it assigns the event handler, and of course it opens up the window, which will eventually then call the opener, which is the tab this is running in, um, and then that complete login function. Um, and then here, same thing, except it's without the comments. So that one above was for Facebook, this one's for LDS Connect. The only difference is this one has a ton of comments in it. This one, all the comments are stripped out. And let me just go ahead and copy this bit of code in here too. Yeah, that should go in there. And maybe we could even say for Yeah, I'll copy that one and this one up here. Copy and pasting. Bad idea. Means it should be abstracted somehow. All right, and then I just have this little init function that first tests the login, so you know it will immediately change the interface to show um, what their login is if they were already logged in, um, and then just does some other you know initialization of what buttons should show and what shouldn't. So pretty simple example. Um, that's it. I'll go ahead and commit that change for you. Alright, add login failure alert. And there you are. Happy OAuthing. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top, give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.